Welcome back to WGAL's debate with the two candidates running to represent the 10th Congressional District. Incumbent Republican Representative Scott Perry and Democratic Challenger State Auditor General Eugene DePasquale. Let's talk about racism and the Black Lives Matter movement. Congressman Perry, you spoke at a Rotary meeting in York County and questioned whether systemic racism exists. What do you mean by that? Janelle, thanks again for the question. Like I've said before, racism in any and all forms is wrong, period, end of sentence. But that's why we all have to work together to find solutions. And that's why I reached out to our minority community and I reached out to our law enforcement and policing community. And I voted for the Justice Act, which made sure that everybody got a fair shake and an even hand, but didn't defund our police. But I will tell you what's not helpful, what fans the flame of discord and discontent in our community is my opponent marching arm in arm with people carrying a sign that says blue lives murder. Ladies and gentlemen, police officer and law enforcement are our family. They are our friends. They are our neighbors and brothers and sisters, fathers and, and, and mothers. And, and they have a very, very difficult job to do. And I will just tell you that um, when, when it's late at night and you're worried about you know, something happening outside and you want to call 911, you want to have the confidence that, that someone's going to come. And that is why, after talking to the sheriff, every single sheriff in this congressional district and every single district attorney in this congressional district who knows me, who knows my record, and who knows my opponent and knows his record has decided to endorse me. There's a reason for that. We can work together to find solutions, but seeing our cities burn and seeing people hurt and riots occurring is not solving the problem and is not bringing us together as a community. We absolutely can do better, and I've done that. So you don't think people should be protesting? It's not about protesting, Janelle. Of course, protesting is, is enshrined in the Constitution and, and, and it's part of America, the, the fabric of America. But burning, rioting, looting and hurting people is not that's not protesting. That's lawlessness and it's dangerous and it's divisive. I think after you made the remark at the Rotary Club, the head of the York County Republicans thought it was egregious enough that he actually threw his, his endorsement to Mr. Pasquale. Again, I, my statement is very clear. Racism in any all forms is wrong. Period. Thank you. Auditor General. Systemic racism is real, and the deaths of too many people of color at the hand of law enforcement is unacceptable. <clears throat> and Congressman Perry missed a moment. He could have tried to be uniting, instead was divisive, as he normally is. Let me be clear about this. Systemic racism is real, and we must do better as a community. I completely oppose defunding the police, but I also support people's right to peacefully protest in any form of violence, whether it come from the left or from the right, is unacceptable. But as you said, the former head of the Republican Party in your county, after hearing that, decided to endorse me in this campaign because he knows I'm someone that will bring us together. We need to do a better job of tearing down the walls between too many people of color and our law enforcement. Look, and when it comes to that, look, I had a lot of relatives that were in law enforcement. I certainly know that the challenges and the incredible, incredibly difficult work that they have every single day to keep our communities safe. But we also have to recognize that we have a problem. That's why the statement Black Lives Matter is so critical. And I got to give credit to my son on this. When you have a bumper sticker that says, save the bay, you're recognizing that we have a pollution problem in the Chesapeake Bay. It doesn't mean you're anti-Pacific Ocean. When we say black lives matter, it's critical because for all, in order to all lives matter, black lives matter, and that's what we must all strive for. All right, let's talk about police reform. You have both said you are in favor. What does reform look like to you, Auditor General DePasquale? Yeah, thank you, Janelle. Look, to me, first of all, it also is important to stress that these reforms are probably way too long in coming, but they need to happen. First of all, we need to have nationwide standards to improve training. We need to have better mental health screenings to make sure that people that shouldn't have a badge and a gun don't. And when you have officers that actually have egregious behavior and they're removed from the force, they just can't go to another department and get another job. Uh, they can get another job, but not as a police officer. Those reforms are critical. And by the way, it's also important to note that Congressman Perry voted against some of those con common sense reforms in Washington, things that could have done a better job to bring our communities together. I also would like to see more cooperation between our communities, 
uh, in the region and law enforcement. Law enforcement would benefit from that and public safety in the communities would benefit from that. And that's something that I will work towards, to bring our communities together so that we can have safer communities and law enforcement can do their job and the people that are bad officers that need to be removed from the force are removed from the force. And we can ban chokeholds and improve training. Each of those together will be a win for our region and a win for the entire country. And it's also important to remind people, Congressman Perry voted against those common sense reforms. Common sense that would have made our community safer and he could have shown leadership. Instead, he de decided to divide by saying systemic racism wasn't real and the deaths of George Floyd and others were sensationalized. That's unacceptable. Thank you, Congressman Perry. Again, fanning the flames of discord is what my opponent did. Imagine your leader, your representative in Congress marching arm in arm with somebody that says blue lives murder. Meanwhile, you might have to call the police someday, and this is the person that, uh, that represents you. It goes much further than just police reform. It, it means things like youth build, so that, so that young people don't find themselves in the system where police are engaged and, and in their neighborhoods all the time. But I voted for the Justice, Justice Act after reaching out to our police officers because as a member of Congress, you think, some people think that they have all the answers, but it's important to go get the answers for the people that actually do it. The police want to do a good job and they don't want to be defunded. And I will tell you, it's, it's great to know that none of the police forces in the 10th Congressional District, district authorized chokeholds. So that's always already there. But what about things like opportunity zones? Again, to turn down the temperature and provide opportunities to, uh, to people in hard hit neighborhoods that might find themselves in the, in the uh, judicial system because of criminal activity, to stop it right before it begins. I voted for that. And how about the First Step Act? I voted for that. The candidate that my opponent's supporting for president created a problem where people were unduly being sent to prison for long periods of time, sowing the, disc the seeds of discord in our community, and finally funding historically black colleges and universities to give people a step up, a leg up, and a way to get out of the situation that they're in. That's actual tangible results, and those are the things I voted for. Very quickly, Mr. D. Pasquale, tell, him, tell me about this Blue Lives Murder sign. Yeah, I don't even know what sign the congressman is talking about. I do know that I was there to peacefully protest the murder of George Floyd. And the person I was arm in arm with was the police chief of Harrisburg. That's who I was with. And when it comes to criminal justice reform, let me be clear. My father was wounded on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. His right leg was practically blown apart, and his left leg was also shot up. He eventually was, was given a prescription by the VA for synthetic heroin which led to a 30-year battle with addiction and eventually incarceration. I've seen the struggle families have to deal with with incarceration. We have to do a better job of reforming our criminal justice system so the people that pay their debt to society are able to get a job when they come out. All right, thank you, sir. Misinformation, including from the conspiracy theory group QAnon, is responsible for driving wedges in our society. The FBI's assessment is that QAnon is a domestic terror threat. President Trump has refused to denounce QAnon. What do you feel your role as a congressman is to address misinformation? And Congressman Perry, we're going to start with you. Okay. Why did you vote against a resolution in September that specifically condemned QAnon? So let's make some clarifications first of all. What we're talking about from the FBI is a memo, not some long-standing report and investigation. And unfortunately, for someone who has revered the FBI my whole life, very disappointed to find out that they had the computer in question regarding Hunter Biden since since uh, December of last year and let the impeachment proceedings go on with information critical to those proceedings captured and held by the FBI. But that all having been said, I was proud to wear the uniform of the United States military for over three decades. And part of that meant that I support and defend the Constitution. Each one of us raises our hands and takes an oath to do that. And it means that you have to support things that you don't necessarily agree with. I will tell you, as a member of the military, I find it abhorrent and objectionable when I see folks burning the American flag because I know what it means to American service members and quite honestly, free thinking people all around the world who are yearning to breathe free. But at the same time, I know it's my duty to protect your right to burn that flag if you want to. So in America, you can believe the things that you want to believe. They might be objectionable to me, but I have a duty to uphold and defend the Constitution. The Constitution is a piece of paper 
It's a piece of paper. It cannot defend itself. It requires people of strength and integrity and courage to support it even when it's uncomfortable. You can always count on me to do that. All right, thank you. Auditor General. Here's what we can count on the congressman to do. Actually condemn extremist conspiracy theorists. QAnon is a conspiracy theorist. Nobody's saying they didn't have a right to say what they said. But only 18 members of the United States Congress voted against a resolution condemning them. They threaten violence, they are conspiracy theorists, and they are dangerous. And nobody is questioning people's right to free speech. But when only 18 members of the United States House of Representatives votes against the resolution condemning QAnon, you have to question why. The real reason why is that certain people, Congressman Perry included, are worried about alienating a far-right fringe in an election campaign. Let me be clear. You can condemn hate and not make it illegal at the exact same time. It's not that difficult. The First Amendment is clear. Political speech is absolutely protected. And we both support that. But when someone is a hate-mongering, fear-inducing conspiracy theorist, it's important that all of us put our voice out there to say that this is wrong, unacceptable, and should not be something that people should pay any attention to. And that's the type of leadership I will bring as your member of Congress, someone that will work to bring people together, work across the aisle, and get things done, as opposed to giving backhanded, tacit approval to conspiracy theorists like QAnon, like Scott Perry did. Congressman, that's a pretty strong accusation. Sure, of course it is. Uh, it, my, my opponent's desperate, and he's going to make accusations like that. Once again, you take an oath of office to uphold and defend the Constitution, and where he says, well, you can't condemn hate, a lot of people dislike a lot of things in this country. Some people don't like certain vegetables or what have you, but... I, but it's very dangerous for the government or some of these other pseudo-government agencies to determine what it's okay to like and what it's not okay to like. And as long as violence, as long as nothing f uh, follows that, we got to be really careful with that. And we saw that right here in your city, Janelle. We saw that right here in your city with your police chief who did the right thing, whose, whose wife had an opinion, and he lost his job because his wife had an opinion that she put out there. Is that okay? Is that okay for our community to know that when you say something that you believe that you're going to lose your livelihood over it? I think it's a very, very careful place that we need to be, and I stand with the Constitution on every single occasion, not, when it's ju not just when it's comfortable. Very quickly before we move on, most of your colleagues did vote to uh, disavow QAnon. Again, somebody has to stand up for the Constitution. Okay. I stand on my record. All right, thank you, sir. Let's talk about jobs or the lack thereof. The nation has only recouped about half of the 22 million jobs lost since coronavirus hit here. What, does, what is your plan to get Americans working again? Auditor General De Pasquale, we begin with you. Look, I've been touring businesses throughout South Central Pennsylvania that should have gotten help from Washington, D.C. during COVID-19 and did not. Congressman Perry and people in both parties voted for an original package that actually gave money to the Los Angeles Lakers and didn't give it to the Quarterstone Barbershop in York County, the North Hanover Grill in Carlisle, or other businesses throughout our South Central region that ended up having to furlough so many employees. It is critical that we get direct aid to our small businesses that are forced to stay closed or open at half capacity until we can get a, a vaccine to get this economy back up and running. Look, I also was tough on Governor Wolf. My business waiver audit showed exactly how small businesses were disadvantaged if you didn't have a high-priced lobbyist. So what do we do? We get direct aid to the businesses that need help. People that are unemployed through no fault of their own should also get additional help. And we should allow um, a bipartisan group to continue to work based on safety and science standards to get a vaccine done so that we can go back to some semblance of normal. Look, and we also need to have appropriate oversight of this. Look, as Auditor General, I've been a tough and fair watchdog. Congressman Perry actually voted against oversight of COVID funds. That's how the Los Angeles Lakers got it and not the Cornerstone Barbershop in York City. That needs to change and we can do better and with my leadership we will. 
Congressman, what is your plan to get Americans working again? So let's get a couple things straight first. The reason that the Lakers and other institutions like the Kennedy Center got money that they shouldn't have gotten is because Speaker Pelosi and colleagues that would like to serve with my opponent in Congress demanded those things be in there. But folks like us who actually have run a business, by the way, I've actually run a business. I've worked in the private sector. My opponent, I don't think, has worked in the private sector since college. But we understood what was happening, that the government was taking away people's livelihoods. And when the government does that, it's no different than eminent domain. So in that case where businesses were calling me every single day and wondering how come the store down the street gets to be open, but I don't because of the governor's waiver program, I fielded those calls and I fought on their behalf because I knew what they were going through and I voted for things that they needed like the PPP and unemployment compensation and direct funds right to the governor that then he misused to extort counties like Lebanon County and even your county in this, in, in this congressional district. That having been said, while all that was happening, again, the governor's waiver program, we were unsure what was happening. Businesses were unsure. We called on the fiscal watchdog the overseer of, of these government policies in Pennsylvania to conduct an audit. He begrudgingly did it. Then he sat on it for six months. And then when he came out with this scathing report, a scathing report that said he was puzzled and it was inconsistent. Janelle, we all knew that. He told us what we already knew. We should have hired Captain Obvious to do this audit because we didn't find anything new. What we need to know, is this going to happen when the governor locks down this state again? What are the standards? And right now, we don't know it because my opponent has slow rolled that investigation and provided us no information. Very quickly, I'll give you a chance for a rebuttal. Scott Perry just said that my audit was scathing of the governor. He just said it. And that's what the audit was. It was a scathing audit and showed exactly what needed to be done to make sure small businesses had the support they needed. But where he failed, and all of D.C. failed, was passing a relief package that didn't get aid to actual small businesses and went to the Los Angeles Lakers, the Kennedy Centers, and all the, and maybe, who knows, I think both parties were to blame. He certainly may have a point on that, but he was part of the problem there. Under my leadership, we'll get aid to where it needs to go, to the small businesses of South Central Pennsylvania. Quick yes or no before we go to break. Uh, the Trump administration's trade war with China, we have so many farmers around mm -hmm. here. Did it help or hurt them, Congressman? Well, the trade war obviously is something much bigger than we all have to, than we have to acknowledge right now. It's bigger than that. And so what we did was we ensured that farmers got direct payments to offset the differences caused by the trade war. China needs to be reined in. They are not a strategic competitor. They are a strategic adversary. This president's the only one in the first one that's been willing to admit that and do something about it. Do you think it helped or hurt farmers? It helped us in the long run. We, we made up for it in direct payments to them. Thank you, Auditor General. Quickly. I've said from the beginning of the Trump administration that one thing I do agree with is his ability to get tough on China. I think presidents of both parties, particularly Democrats, have been weak on trade with China. So I agree with them. I don't always like his style, but I do agree that we've allowed them to steal our company's intellectual property and they have and they've put barriers up for our cars and our manufacturing jobs to get into China. So he is right about that. And I will work with him if I'm elected and he's elected. I don't like the, the backdoor tariffs, though. I don't like them because that becomes a backdoor tax increase on our farmers and our consumers of America. But I do think he's right to be tough on China. Has the trade war with China helped or hurt our farmers? I think it's hurt the farmers. I okay. do think it's hurt the farmers. All right, thank you. We're going to take a break, move on. A lot of ground to cover. Uh, more questions for the candidates in the 10th Congressional District when we come right back.